In today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to install this beautiful 18,000 BTU Senville heat pump. As you know, I've installed several different brand mini splits, but the Senville has some really cool hidden features that I'm excited to show you about. I feel like any homeowner or DIYer with some mechanical ability can totally tackle this project themselves. So let's get right into it. So what we're gonna be doing here is removing this ancient window AC unit and we're gonna be installing an 18,000 BTU mini split that's going to condition this, what used to be a pretty massive two bay garage, and it's going to make a huge difference. This unit was really loud and quite frankly, a little bit undersized for the space. So it's gonna make a big difference in conditioning the space and it's going to be super quiet and she's going to love it. So our mini split condenser is going to be right on the other side of this wall. So the first order of business is we're going to remove this window AC and patch this and then we'll start our installation. Well, that was pretty easy. Basically just took the cover off, slid it out. Now we just have to take this out. There's just four screws, two on each side. This whole thing should slide out and then we can go about patching it. All right, so here's where we're at. We'll show you on the outside. We had some old siding that we were able to use. It's not a perfect match, but it's kind of in an enclosed, unvisible place, so it doesn't really matter. But this is a dedicated 220 10 gauge outlet that was specifically for this AC. So we have the power killed to this, and we want our disconnect to be on the outside right here somewhere. So we're gonna take a drill bit and we're going to run it through this corner into the utility room here. And as you can see, this is the wire that comes down and goes right into this box. So we're gonna try and miss this corner, this finished drywall, and we're gonna run that wire straight through and put our disconnect there. All right, so as you can see, we have it out of our box here and we're going straight through and we'll show you what it looks like outside. And I just got my first layer of hot mud on this. So we'll get that sanded, get a second layer on and we should be golden there. Oh yeah, look at that. Dang, we're good. Okay, so out here we have our siding patched. Um, it's not a perfect match, but it looks pretty good. And this is kind of a hidden little cove here, so it doesn't really matter. We have our wire pulled through, about to install our disconnect box. And we have this strain relief to keep that wire from rubbing against raw metal. So we're gonna mount it right there. All right, so our disconnect is mounted. We have our two lines here. We have the fuses and we have our ground attached in the middle. This white um, was used on the old outlet, but we don't need that neutral. When we install our whip, our two load will go here and the other ground will go right there. So we're pretty much ready to set our pad, put our condenser here, and then we'll get started on the head unit. All right, so we are ready to make our hole for our head unit. This is the template that comes with it. Um, so a couple of things you wanna keep in mind is number one, where are your studs at? You definitely don't want to go through a stud because you will mess with the integrity of that wall. So we're just going to verify here. So we have a stud right here and that's going to clear this hole. And then our other stud is going to be right here. So we might put a couple anchors here, but I've run my pencil in these marks so we know where this bracket goes. And I did a hole here so we know where the hole goes there. So now we can take this off, get our hole drilled, and then put our bracket up. All right, so we've got our hole drilled. We just have the center hole punched on the siding and we're gonna go from the other side and punch this hole. Our bracket is hitting both studs and we're about ready to hang it. And then we're gonna pop out that bracket on the bottom, especially thing that so far only the Senville that I have found comes with this. So a really cool feature. The bracket is also really sturdy compared to some of the other brands and it has a built-in level, which is cool. All right, so we're just gonna line up these brackets. And then we're gonna slide it straight down. And that's gonna be the finished product when it's done. But to pull it up, we pull down on these little holes here and that will give us access and then this little bracket here swivels out and it just clips into the bracket 
So now we have room to make our connections, to connect the condensate drain and the wiring, and it's a really nice feature of the Send build. All right, so we got our 18,000 BTU condensing unit set. You'll notice that the dryer vent is right here, which not super ideal, but this is blowing right in front of it. So when this fan is on, it's just gonna be blowing that away, which is good. If it was blowing this way right into the intake, that would be even worse, but it will function just fine the way it is. And then we have our hole made. So we're gonna run it straight down over and into our connectors there. So that's the next thing we're gonna do. And then once our fittings are done there, we'll run the communication wiring and the whip for the high voltage. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is cut and flare our pipes. Now I'm gonna be using the NAVAC flare tool. If you want to learn how to do this with a manual flare tool, I've got a few videos that show how to do it. It's a pretty easy process. Um, it takes obviously a little bit longer than using the NAVAC flare tool, but it's easy to do. And I feel like any DIYer can create a successful flare joint. But another important aspect is you definitely want to use Nylog Blue. That's gonna create a nice leak-free seal, something that I definitely recommend. So I'll show you how to and where to apply that as well. Now, once we have our pipe cut, we always want to ream the inside to make sure it has a nice smooth surface to create our flare joint. And you also want to make sure that it's pointed down a little bit and knock out any debris that might have fallen in there. It's the last thing you want on the inside of the pipe. So let's grab our NAVAC flare tool and we'll show you how easy that is to use. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is remove the flare nut that we're going to be using. Make sure we put that on first. And then we're going to put the correct size fitting. This is a half inch line. We're going to put it on until it seats on this little um, stopper right here. So that's how we know it's fully seated. And then we simply take our tool and slide it until these arrows match up with the lines on the back side of this. Crimp it down, press the button, and we're making a flare. Okay our tool off and look how beautiful the flare is that's basically a factory flare right there and you can just slide that over and we're ready to mount it so we're going to do the same for our liquid side and then we'll show you where to put the nylog blue and get these permanently installed all right so we're going to make our permanent connections here so with our nylog we're just going to put it on the face and you can be pretty generous it's safe for all types of refrigerant so it's not a problem if some gets in the line. So I usually do it on the back side of the flare here and the face of the other side. So we'll go ahead and match this up, get that started. Now, as far as the torque settings for these, if you want to use a torque wrench, quarter inch line will be 18 foot pounds and the half inch line is gonna be 50 foot pounds but I usually do this by hand and I have yet to have any sort of leaks. So if you're pretty familiar with tightening on vehicles, bolts and stuff, you can usually get a pretty good feel of how tight is close to that foot pound level. And the nylog is an extra layer of seal here. So we're just gonna do the same thing on the larger line here. And then we're gonna permanently install these. So while we tighten this, we're gonna hold the service valve or the king valve so it doesn't tweak and break the, uh, the king valve here. Okay, that one's good. Let's move on to the low side. Okay, so those are permanently installed. Next, we'll go over into the inside unit and do the same thing. And once that's done, we can start pulling our vacuum. All right, so both of our liquid and suction line have been insulated after tightening them uh, completely with our Nylog Blue. So those are good, this is all complete. The last thing we need to do before we can permanently set this unit is we're gonna run this communication wire up to here. 
Now you'll notice there's a plug here. This is for testing. So once we take this off, we will remove the two terminals and then we'll connect our wires here. In order to get to this, for whatever reason, we have to take this screw out and this screw out. And this section right here will slide down about a half inch. And then we can pivot this up and get to our communication wires right here. So there's the two test terminals. We're gonna take those off. And then we have our one, two, and three. It's going to be red, white, and black. And then the ground is gonna to go to that green lug there. And there's the finished product. So we have red going to one, white to two, black to three, and green to ground. So we can button this up fully seated. There's no gaps. Everything looks perfect here. So this is gonna look really nice when it's all finished and done. All right, so we're ready to pull our vacuum. So what we're gonna do next is take this cap off for our service port. And we're going to take out the Schrader core. And because it's a 5 16 we're gonna be using this 5 16 to quarter inch Schrader core removal tool. This is a really invaluable tool. I highly recommend keeping one of these in 5 16 or quarter inch. Uh, most systems are gonna be quarter inch, but most mini splits are actually 5 16 So make a note of that. Okay, so first of all, I usually just take this off the tool. It's a lot easier. I'm just gonna snap it in. You'll hear it once it snaps in and we'll remove our core. This is magnetic so we can set it on the top of the unit and then we'll take our tool and we'll put it right there. Now, because there's only one service port, we're limited. This isn't normally how I do it. I usually have my micron gauge on the high side because it's the furthest away from the vacuum pump. But in this instance, we're gonna put our micron gauge on this one. And then once our vacuum has been pulled, we can turn this valve off and we can isolate this from the pump and make sure that it passes our decay test. So we're gonna hook up our hose here that goes to our vacuum pump, and then we'll put our micron gauge, and then we'll start our vacuum. And you'll notice this has a core depressor tool, so it will depress this core. Now something to note is we're not doing a pressure test, but if we get below 500 microns and we're able to stay there, that kind of acts as a pressure test, because if we did have a leak, we wouldn't get to 500 microns. So let's go ahead and start our vacuum pump and see what we got. So this is a pretty short line set, so we should be able to pull this down rather quickly. So we'll give it about five, 10 minutes and see where we're at. So it's been about a minute. We're already down to 500 microns. So we'll give this a few more minutes and see what we can get it down to. All right, so all the electrical is finished up. We have our high voltage ground line one and two here, and then we have one, two, and three, red, white, and black. And then our ground goes there. And up here at our whip, we have our load, two load wires and our ground, and our two line wires and our ground there. So we can go ahead and put this cover back on, just like that. And then on our vacuum, we're at 180. So we can probably go ahead and do an isolation test close this valve off, turn our pump off. And as long as we don't rise above 500 within five minutes, we're golden. And all we'll have to do next is open both of these king valves under these caps here. And something to note is that these Senvils are pre-charged for up to 25 feet, but they are completely variable speed. So if you have less than 25 feet, you should be fine. It's not gonna damage the system. Now, if you do have to add some refrigerant, it's 0.5 ounces per foot. That's in addition to that 25 feet. So if you have a run that's say 50 feet, you would need to add 25 feet times that 0.5 ounces per foot. All right, so it's been five minutes and we've crept up to 200, which is totally under that 500 mark. So we should be golden on the micron test so we'll go ahead and remove our vacuum pump hose. The next thing we're just gonna do is isolate our micron gauge. And you'll notice that this sometimes will go up. Sometimes a little bit of air will get trapped right here and that can throw off the gauge a little bit. But as long as it was holding um, with this valve open, then we're good. So we'll go ahead and open 
both of these lines, letting the refrigerant charge into the rest of the system. There's a little metal O-ring or a clamp that it'll stop against, and that's how you know it's fully seated. Okay, so we'll go ahead and tighten our caps, and then we'll put our core back in, and we'll be ready to fire this guy up. Okay, so to do the core, we're gonna pull this about halfway here, slide it in, tighten this down, and then we'll open this valve here. And with one hand, we'll push this in, and with the other, we'll start threading in that core. Quite a bit of pressure on it, so it might be a little bit difficult to keep it in place. And then once you hit resistance, you know that that's fully seated. And what I like to do is close this and slowly take this um, end piece off and then slowly open the core tool. And that's it. So we can throw the cap on here and we'll be ready to fire the system up. All right, so we just got the disconnect put in and the breaker turned on. I'm gonna turn this on, set it to cool, and we're gonna bump it down to 68 degrees, nice and quiet. Now the cool thing about this Aura model is that it is compatible with Alexa. So there's a little USB that comes with the packaging and you simply plug it in under the display there. And then you can control this unit via Alexa and you can tell it to bump the temperature up or down, turn it off, set it to heating or cooling and you can do that all just with your voice so notice what happens if i say hey alexa turn ac downstairs down two degrees a couple of seconds later as you can see we didn't do anything with the remote and we have full functionality of the ac so let's go out to the outside unit and see what we got going on out there all right so we've got this filled up we have this piece attached first then this middle section will go and butt right there. So we have that attached. Next, we're just gonna cut this to length. And as you can see, it'll just snap into these grooves on the side. And the last piece we'll be putting up is that one there. All right, guys, here is the finished product. We are pulling out tons of heat. Our um, finished cover here turned out really good. We sealed this with great stuff before we put that together. As you can tell, it's really quiet, much quieter than a traditional AC. And everything turned out really nicely here. Um, we have our condensate drain going out over there. And then we have our connections here. Super pleased with this install. And it's gonna be really nice that the garage, this room here has its own controls and it's not gonna be limited to uh, whatever the house is spitting out of that one supply vent that was coming in. So definitely gonna be a much more ideal situation, not to mention the fact that it's going to save them money not having to run those baseboard heaters during the winter months. Well guys, it was that easy to install this 18,000 BTU mini split. I hope you guys found this beneficial. If you're interested in seeing how to install this same system, but a dual zone system, check out this video right here and I'm sure you'll find it informative as well. Till next time, you guys be safe. Later.